Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO Retrospective Podcast, where we talk about all things 3DO, the 3DO company, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Thrack. How you doing, Thrack? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing okay. It's It's been... It's only Tuesday, and it already feels like it's been like an entire week. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Plus, I got um, I, I'm going to a uh, Retro World, the the convention nearby, uh, the Retro Gaming Convention I go to every year nearby, and uh, the anticipation for that's like, God damn, I just want it to be Friday already. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah. W- work has been very slow, you know, to to the point where it's like I'm like banging my head against the wall. Because it's like, I, I feel like I need to be doing something, but, mm. you know, I don't know, hopefully that'll change as time goes on or, or, or maybe there's, hopefully there'll be other things they give me to do. Cause like, just give me more, please. There's only, you know, so little I can do before I just get bored out of my skull. Mm. But, um, but before we get into the topic, I know last week we were talking about the Dreamcast uh, and talk about Sega. Um, our, if our audio listeners probably can't see it, but our videos can see. I bought a Dreamcast because I, I couldn't find the one I had forever ago. I looked and looked. And so I went to a retro store. They wanted, it was like 130 for it. So I was like, sure, why not? And then I got a, a decent stack of games from them. And I've just been playing those. And uh, I, I, I did order some other stuff off eBay. Um, I, I'm just treating this as like a little birthday thing for me. For me. Because uh, this weekend, uh, this was my birthday on Saturday. Nice. Turning 30. Ugh. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I, I view this as, as a gift for myself. So so I've been playing. If this doesn't make me a Sega guy, nothing will. I'm playing Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future on the Dreamcast. Um, and I, I don't mind it. It's not a, it's not a terrible game at all. I, I'd always heard. I mean, I feel like the Echo series is kind of polarizing anyways and i can i can understand why um but i i enjoy the vibe of all of these games you know i, I it's just like i enjoy chilling like the idea of being a dolphin just kind of swimming around and you know occasionally beating the shit out of sharks is kind of cool echo tides of time i still i think is legitimately a really good game that's um, probably the best one Echo One is very dated, and I I still think Echo One is one of the most tonally confused games I think I've ever played. Yeah, like, yeah, but I think the idea was it was meant to kind of throw you off. True, because like spoiler warning for anyone who hasn't played it, but like the fucking aliens, like at the end of the game, like what the fuck? Like, I mean, they're just xenomorphs. <laughs> just you get like, to the final like all, boss. Like all are now, yeah. You get to the final boss, it's like, holy fuck, Nightmare Fuel, what kid was playing this back yeah. in the day? I, I'm told this guy, uh, the, the Dreamcast one, it goes some interesting places later on, because there's like four main areas that you go in, and I'm I'm near the end of the first one. But mm-hmm. uh, there's some more stuff that happens, and I'm told it kind of gets off the rails. And there's some like bits about like humans and dolphins forming an alliance to fight off aliens. Um, it's, it's, it's a whole strange thing but 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 i i i'm I'm enjoying this one it's the game does a better job at telling you what to do and like where to go um so you have a much better sense of direction it being in 3d i think makes a lot of sense some people aren't a fan of the controls which i could see but i honestly don't have an issue with them um because like you don't have to tap the a button to swim you can just tap it like twice and then hold it and then he'll just swim kind of mm. thing um and yeah it, it it has some slightly frustrating bits like when you're going through some very narrow tunnels and the barnacles will hit you and trying to sneak past the octopus early on by having that one dolphin distract him and you're trying to go around them but it's like i didn't pick the right side so it wasn't working so i went on the other side and it worked but but it's not bad it's not bad like it, it got decent reviews on the dreamcast the ps2 version didn't um, but you a know. lot of Dreamcast ports did not trans. They, they didn't get as great reviews on their uh, porting. Yeah, I noticed because like, I think uh, I think Dreamcast games are just kind of overall harder to port. The Dreamcast had a very specific uh, CPU. Like apparently, it was like one of the most sophisticated of the era, but it was also like really particular at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some decent um, Dreamcast ports like Sonic Adventure Two. 
Um, I'm trying to think. I think Cra Crazy Taxi is not too bad. Um, yeah. I think the reason why a lot of those games are the way they are is because the Dreamcast hardware is basically the Sega's uh, Naomi board at the time. Yep. And yep. I think like the, the GameCube was very comparable in a lot of ways. That's why a lot of GameCube ports, I think, were handled better. Yeah, yeah, because the GameCube's running off, what was it, the IBM Gecko? Hmm. It sounds right in my head. Uh, not not IBM, I think ATI. ATI, yeah. I think you're right, ATI, but it was I think it was called the Gecko processor. Um, hmm. And funnily enough, the GameCube's code name was Dolphin. Yeah. So... I Honestly, I think the PS2 was the only console that had issues with Dreamcast stuff because... Yeah, Xbox... I mean, the version of Shenmue 2 on Xbox, I would argue, is better than the Dreamcast version. Well, it's it's finished. They added the dub. They basically True. flushed it out. True. And the Xbox was just a more powerful system in general. Yeah, yeah. The, it could, it, and it was much easier to develop and port games to it because it was essentially a PC. The PS2 so. was the most underpowered of that generation, not counting the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is its own thing. Um, the PS2 out of the big three was the most underpowered, and the Emotion Engine was kind of it was it was your it was your typical Ken Kutaragi. This thing is on only we know how to use it properly. Yeah, because um, you see those tech demos and they're like fantastic, and then you look at like Smuggler's Run, and it's like, are you sure about this, man? Did you notice how Sony's first party games always seem to look better? Yeah, interesting. Or or developers that had very close ties, like I don't know, Kojima or just something like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's 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 just funny how stuff like that goes on. It, that's also why like porting PS2 games to anything else is a pain because the Emotion Engine is a pain. It's kind of yeah. like this, the cell processor. It was godly powerful, but fucking pain in yeah. the ass to work with. Yeah, it's like I think that's why the the PS2 and even the Xbox versions of MVC2 are pretty rough because if mm. i remember correctly the dreamcast version of marvel's capcom 2 was kind of a remake of that game specifically for the dreamcast yes because it was running on arcade hardware but you know they had to retool it and then the port to ps2 and xbox was from the dreamcast version and that's where the issues arise from that i think the dreamcast i love how we're talking dreamcast again but that's that's fine um it's a great console it is. It it's really is. But I believe the Dreamcast versions of like almost all of those fighters at the time were the definitive versions for like the longest time up until like the Xbox Live and PSN like arcade perfect ports like years later. Yeah, e even then, I think the XBLA version of MVC two does have some weird issues with it. But I think it's it's closer to the arcade version than the Dreamcast version. But, you know. But yeah, like say, like the versions of Street Fighter on there, Third Capcom Strike. versus SNK, um, Soul Calibur, you know, like fighting games did really well in the Dream, even Project Justice. Like, there's you know, fighting games did really well in Dreamcast, and, and it makes sense, it's hard, it's arcade hardware, you know, oh, yeah, but and somehow they made four face buttons work, you know, there is a six button like third party controller I've seen. I've, I've there, been there's to... arcade sticks as well, yeah, like, there's the, the famous green one. Hmm. Yeah, I've been you meaning can to shove uh, a VM, you can shovel VMU into it, yeah, which is awesome. Can. I was, I when I was like Dreamcast shopping, I did see a couple of them in person, but I'm not paying 230 bucks for that thing. Yeah, you know my favorite part about everyone's first reaction to turning on a Dreamcast is beep. Well, there's that, and they're always like, "It's loud as fuck." I think it's dying. I'm like, "No, that's just how it's at. That's always how it's been." Yeah, it's notoriously loud, but it runs just fine. Like mine is perfect and. And it's the one you can uh, play bootleg games on, but I don't have a CD drive. At least I don't have an external one. So, I mean, I could go out of my way to do that if I really wanted to play Cannon Spike on this thing, because I'm not paying the Cannon Spike price. I'm not doing it. But, I think the biggest reason to own that particular model is they're they're the ones that our uh, Bleemcast works on. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the it has the one with the circle around it. It was apparently it was manufactured in February of 2000. Yep. So yeah, but we'll we'll see. I I, I prefer hunting down the the official games. I, I find it more interesting. Um, it, you know it's crazy, but it makes so much sense. The same people who made this game, well, apparently they were doing a sequel, but this got shit canned because of the Dreamcast. But the same people who did this made this. Yep. Appaloosa. It, 
Yes. So for, for audio listeners, the same people who made Echo, Defender of the Future on Dreamcast, made Jaws Unleashed for the PS2 and Xbox. It makes so much goddamn sense. I never put it together in my head. Um, though I think Jaws Unleashed is much worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> what I've played of them. Because it's weird. It's It's quite a few years later. You think they would have maybe you figured it out better or fine-tuned it, you know? Appaloosa but. was one of those companies that I swear to God, like, everything they did just kind of came up mediocre. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Echo game's kind of mediocre, but I don't think it's a god-awful game. Well, you also got to remember, too, they made the two, the, uh, the two PlayStation uh, Contra games. Oh, yeah. Legacy of War and... And C, the Contra Adventure. Ah, what a What a, what a name. <laughs> what a great game. What a great title. And- they did co-develop Tiny Tank, though, so I give them that. <laughs> they're, they're not a terrible company. They're just a weird one. Fun fact about Appaloosa, they're actually the, the successor to Novotrade, the original developer of Echo. Oh, yeah, because they because their uh, Wikipedia credits them for all the games. Hmm. Uh, I don't think Ed Enunziata was involved with uh, the Dreamcast one, though. No, he was not. I think he he's had... involved with... He was involved with the genesis ones yeah so he had left to form the studio and now productions they only made two games they made tiny tank and mort the chicken yay (laughs) great stuff man yeah and then he's tried to get i think he yeah he tried to kickstart a echo like a new echo game called the big blue um which uh, didn't but to be fair he asked for a lot of money and he got a decent amount but not that much um, yeah. But then he, I guess, got into like a weird class action suit with Sega over the rights to Echo. And then that got settled. I don't know what any of that means. Is it like, was he just trying to get the Echo name so he could take, you know, his game? I think it's called the Big Blue and just make it an Echo game. I honestly don't know. This All this happened like five years ago and we haven't heard a thing. So I wouldn't expect a thing. No, I, I think the problem is like Echo is such a, a cult classic dreamcast game that like not a lot of people are asking for it right now no no it, it, like sega i've I, I have a feeling they're starting to dip their toes back into their legacy franchises which is something they should have been doing uh more of because i think it was what last year or something they had that big thing of oh we're bringing back jet set crazy taxi shinobi all that stuff which is awesome and they said they're doing more. Who knows what that means? I mean, could a new Echo game be in the works? Maybe. We don't I think, know. I think what's happening with Sega right now is they're like the healthiest as of a company they've been since they went third party at this point. Like Yakuza and Atlas basically carries them at this point. I mean, um, Sonic still does well. Sonic does well, but they don't have to rely on Sonic anymore. And Sonic's no. not 100% a laughing stock anymore. So. No, but they know that Sonic is a consistent seller. You know, he's, he's yeah. like Cur- he's like Kirby. He'll always sell a couple million no matter what he does. They're also so, really lucky that Yakuza and like Atlas and stuff is at its like absolute peak of mainstream right now. And, and don't forget uh, their very strong PC division mm-hmm. because you have the Total War series still doing their thing. Oh, Apparently, yeah. I heard Creative Assembly might be doing an Alien Isolation 2 that might be in the works. Um, and also they own Two Point. Yep, who've been doing Two Point Hospital and everything, and those games have been very successful. They also apparently so, own the Angry Birds studio, which I just found out. Oh recently. yeah, oh yeah, they bought them not that long ago. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know if that'll ever work out for them. It might. Who knows? But <laughs> yeah. sure, why not? I mean, hey, if we get another, to be fair, we should get another Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. We need another one of those. We could have Angry Birds in there now. They could actually put the Yakuza guys in there. <laughs> they, they could put the Yakuza guys. They could put Persona characters in there. They could have like, they could have a Xenomorph in there. They could have like two point um, representation. Like they have a lot they could pull from, you know? Yeah. Better I mean, than Danica I, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, they, they really missed out, missed out not having Vector Man in a car. Like, come on, man. Bring back Vector Man. God damn it. There apparently was a Vector Man like reimagining at one point, but it got there, like there can. was there was a Vector Man planned for the 32X, then the Dreamcast, then the PS2, and they all got canceled for different reasons. Yeah. And apparently somebody found like um 
a release schedule from Sega that said a Vector Man 3 for like the Genesis in like 98, but we don't know anything about that. Yeah, big, big, the studio that made those, uh, Big Sky, they kind of, or not, not Blue not, not, Sky, Blue Sky, Big Sky made, made Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Um, <laughs> Blue Sky, um, Blue Sky kind of got fucked by Titus because they got like, yeah, fucked by Titus and then. They apparently made the better Superman 64 for PlayStation that got canceled. Yeah, I heard about that. So, so yeah. is what it is. But yeah, hopefully Sega keeps this. Hopefully these this re-release or this like reviving old IP initiative works out for them and they're like good games so we can get more from them. That would be great. I'm um, happy to see Sega. Oh, we did see what was it that that uh we saw didn't they make a trailer recently for it was like for Crazy Taxi or something? I think so. I'd have to relook into that. It's been a while. Yeah, I I, I I remember it was something, and it looked really good. Like, well, because I heard that it was like Crazy Taxi is going to be like a like an open world, like online type thing, which some people kind of groaned at. But in my head, I'm thinking that could work. Great. If any game could do that, Crazy Taxi is like the one, like because then you could, taxi simulator. Well, because that's like yeah, you go into like a lobby, and then you have a bunch of people, and you're and you're you know fighting for fares, kind of thing. Where it's like, see how long, like, whoever gets to this much fare, you know, first you know, or whatever. It's like, that as a multiplayer game, like a competitive multiplayer game, could work. But I think it also needs, like, a arcade single-player offline mode similar to the originals. You know, similar to, hold on. Similar to this guy. I had to get Crazy Taxi. I could oh, yeah. not get it. The thing with Crazy Taxi 2 is like the timing might work. If there is a new Crazy Taxi coming out, the timing might be perfect because there is also a new Offspring album coming out. It's not going to be as good as the classics, but no. hey, the timing is kind of interesting. And I imagine if they wanted to license their new music, it wouldn't be that expensive. I don't even know. They sold their rights a lot recently, so who knows? Yeah, um, well, like, like imagine Sega being like, hey, we want to use like the new Offspring album. Right. I'm sure that they'd just the be like only sure. one they've released in the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure they'd be like, fine. But if they're just like, hey, we want to use that song. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I, you know, the one we all know the one which, I imagine. Oh, are you talking like uh, you're going to go far, kid? It, the the one that uh, starts the Yaz. Oh, you mean the cla the classic classic song? Uh, all yeah. I want. Yeah. yeah all, all, I want. all I want. Like that's that's the crazy taxi song. As far as mm -hmm. I know, like if Sega wanted to use that, which honestly I think they should, it would probably cost them a little bit more because there's that history and people know that history. True. I mean, so, I was always on but the weird they would side be that... smart. They would be smart to throw that in there. They would. True. Be. I was always on the weird side that I preferred uh, the Bad Religion songs personally, like um, them I can and see us. That. In 10 yeah. And 10. I mean, the soundtrack is solid. Like it's a lot of music and bands that. I don't go out of my way to listen to, but when I'm playing a game like Crazy Taxi, it perfect fit. So I don't See, complain. I, during that period when Crazy Taxi came out, I, I was big into uh, pop punk and like hardcore. So that was like the perfect soundtrack for me. It's kind of like why I like the Tony Hawk games so much. Yeah. Yeah. Like those games, all that era, like it, just that music works for it. You know, I'm actually I mean? thinking about the they got the licensing for the Tony Hawk remake. They could pro honestly probably do it for Crazy Taxi. I don't see why not. Hmm. But yeah, but yeah, the, the, uh, more Sega talk. I think Will said we should finish when we finish this. We should do Sega stuff. Honestly, uh, but I, I mean, I'm down. I'm always down to talk Sega. You know that. I'm always down just to talk like gaming in general. Um, I still, yeah. I still kind of like the idea of talking about a obscure console just because no one does, but. Sega stuff is fun too. Oh yeah, S Sega kind of fills that weird niche of being slightly obscure but also mainstream. It somehow fits well, both. I think it's it's interesting because there is a lot of there's more gamers now. I think post like 2000 uh, that don't even remember Sega made consoles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I grew up with the Genesis, and when I grew up with it, it was in the dying days of the Dreamcast. And I didn't know the Dreamcast was a thing until a couple years later. Um, Cause I remember when I asked my parents for like a new Sega console, it was after the Dreamcast was discontinued. So and they, they had to I, let you down easily. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd have to find out exactly when I asked because it could have been a time where you probably still could have found one. But, you know, mm. but it's like when I started going to the rental stores, they didn't have that stuff there. So it was all GameCube, PS2, and Xbox at that point. So. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of gamers that don't remember the time before Microsoft was in gaming. Yeah. Weirdly enough, I don't remember that time either. But, you know, I, I, I was still I was still really young and I wasn't like up to date with all the current stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. I have vivid memories of like the PS1 and 64 era, like before PS2. But OK, yeah, it, I don't I don't have any of that. Hmm. I think it's just because I was surrounded by it at the time. Because pe- uh, I, the neighborhood we lived in, me and Alex was like super. Like everyone had N sixty fours. Like we were like the lone PlayStation family <laughs> at the yeah. time. So I think I was just surrounded by it because I always had like massive N sixty four envy at the time. Yeah, because when I was growing up, I had the NES and the Super Nin- and the Genesis. I didn't have a Super Nintendo. Um, and then I remember I got a Game Boy, and then. Um, a friend of mine, she had a Game Boy Advance, which I eventually got the SP later on down the road. And then I asked for the Game Gear. I was very Nintendo centric, probably because, you know, I was a younger kid and it was easier to give me that. Right. But mm. when I would go to school, more people I knew had PS2s. Well, I mean, everybody had a PS2, it seemed. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. Most, yeah. Most people I, didn't I, use it to play games. But. I, I knew I knew a handful of people who had Xboxes, like original Xbox. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was a couple of them. Um, and I knew some people had GameCubes. Uh, there was a guy who used to like live down the road from me, and I would go over to his house and we'd play Melee. And that's kind of where I learned about how people take Melee really seriously. I think I read you know? a thing like once where like if you had a GameCube back in the day and you didn't have Melee, then you probably didn't have a GameCube. I mean, there was probably that was Screw Attack, wasn't it? But if yeah, I, I I feel like screw I feel like yeah. that was probably a stuttering Craig quote because I think I think it was Handsome Tom. It's so funny because I barely remember Handsome Tom on the show. Oh, I remember, I, I remember Handsome Tom. I remember Nervous Nick more. <laughs> believe I mean, I remember I remember when Handsome Tom had his what was it Game Heroes? Yeah, he after they do his own screw attack, and I after they left on bad terms, and they're I guess they're still on bad terms supposedly, but yeah, well Tom probably just does who in the fuck knows what he does. Now. I don't think he does anything anymore, and then Craig went. Not so. On, yeah, on YouTube, yeah. So. We've talked about that before, but yeah, Tom. Last thing I heard from Tom is that I think he was managing a restaurant. Yeah, good for him with his wife or something. That's that's the last thing I heard. Who knows? But um, but yeah, like I think it was what Melee sold what like seven eight million maybe. It it basically sold the GameCube. <laughs> well, the GameCube sold a lot more than that, but you know, it, it did. But like for the most part, like the majority of like, it was it was the game. It was like the golden eye of like the GameCube. Like it was just that game that everybody had. Yeah, yeah. It's the best selling title on the GameCube at almost seven and a half million. Mm-hmm. So it's just not bad at all. So, but it's just, yeah. You know. But yeah, like I grew up with the GameCube. It's what I had. Um, a lot of people I knew had PS2s. And, and, and always the common complaint I heard with the GameCube was it didn't have Grand Theft Auto. That's always what I heard. See, I was one of those kids that wasn't allowed to play Grand Theft Auto, so... Yeah. Well, you had True Crime. No, I wasn't allowed to play <laughs> games, period. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't allowed to play Embraided Games till I was, like, 13 or 14. Because at, allowed- at that point, my parents didn't care. See, my, my parents were so strict on the rating system, I wasn't allowed to play The Sims until I was 13. <laughs> they were that strict about it. Uh, that, that's funny. It's you know what's funny. funny, though? Like... I think I was kind of desensitized to Grand Theft Auto because by the time I did get to play it, I was I didn't really see what the hype was. <laughs> and I was kind of like, eh, it's a game. When I eventually got to it, it, it was cool to mess around in it, but I got bored with it because I guess every time I'd seen somebody play it, it was they were, you know, just messing around. I didn't know there was actually like a mission. There was like story for a while. Yeah, it, it's, and then, it and then, like, I, uh... then I eventually figured that out and then started doing the story mission. I was like, oh, okay. I can get there's behind a game this. here. <laughs> yeah, there's some here. Yeah, it's it so, was kind of like the original Skyrim, where like I swear to God, everyone like runs away from the story and just fucks yeah, off the entire game. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't I didn't start to keep track of video game stuff probably until I got my 360. Because hmm. then I think is when I was starting to get older enough to like actually keep track of what was going on. You know, because the the GameCube era, 
I didn't really think about it that much, I guess. Cause I was still like really young and I was just playing games, man. Like I would, buy, I would get Lord of the Rings Return of the King and I would play that for a year. And that was my game, you know? So by the time I got to the 360, that's when, that's when you could keep track of the stuff online as well. Like I didn't have video game magazines or anything. So that's when I was able to actually keep track of new releases and learning about games and, and all that stuff. So then that, now we're here. Yep. <laughs> Chronically online brain rot. Yeah, I mean, I try to spend as le le the least amount of time online as I can, but it's kind of hard these days because you got to keep up with everything. Yeah, and and it would be different if, say, like I was busy at work and I didn't have to, and I could just put it to the side and not worry about it. But you know, I just kind of get drawn into it now. Yeah, so I'm just trying to keep myself occupied. Then, like, almost all my friends are on like Discord now. So yeah, yeah, and and like the people. And my, uh, who I work with, they're all like really nice, but they're not people I can do this with. No, they're really not. So, you know, is what it is. So anyways, we're here to talk about the 3DO, right? Yes, we are. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I'm excited because it's actually, we get to talk about a game this time. <laughs> we, fin we finally found a game that wasn't shit. Yeah. So we're talking about Escape from Monster Manor. What a, I what a, what a weird cover. Cover. I fucking love this cover. It's so 90s. It, it looks like a, yeah, like a, like a 90s horror paperback. You know what I mean? Or like, or like say, did, I don't know if Goosebumps ever did this, but like say if you bought like a, like a kid's horror book and then they had like pictures in the middle of it, like color pictures, like this would be there. You know, like Escape from Monster Manor. That's just, you know, the title of like some 90s kitty horror. Hmm. Like, are you afraid of the dark? I fucking loved are you afraid of the dark that was such and then wacky shit. and then if you look on the inside i think that's the dev team i think so too and i love how they all have descriptions yeah they all kind of they they dressed up for the for the ed wood movie that they're gonna they're gonna be in yeah so three the 3do company is such a weird company but the one thing i will always give them credit for like we saw the same stuff in like the uh the zadnasta manual but like they clearly had fun making this shit Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I feel like the 90s was a time where game devs overall were having a good time because it was all very kind of ragtag. And it felt like they were kind of in on something before everybody else was. Mm -hmm. So I feel like making games now, it's probably still fun, but I feel like it's a lot more corporate and you're dealing with a lot more bureaucratic bullshit now because you have a lot of publicly traded companies and all this other mm -hmm. stuff, right? Whereas back then, these comp like people were just making these games kind of weirdly like underground, you know what I mean? It's almost like, it was almost like punk music, Yeah, you know, like it was being made in this like weird underground way. And I think most people didn't understand it, but it was very successful. So there was a market for it, you know, and this is, and, and really it was, I think about the turn of the millennium when we hit say the PS2 era, where I think that's when gaming went mainstream, like genuinely went mainstream with the PS2, I think. Yeah. And but before that, it was still kind of yeah, like ragtag. But what's funny is in mine, I don't know if you have this, it gives me this little thing. Oh, yeah, I have that too. Ten, the, uh... Yeah, the 10 great reasons why you need another 3DO game, and uh, and and John Madden's just staring right into your soul. It's like it's like I'm sleeping. And uh, and the games that they advertise, you ready, folks? John Madden football, we've covered yeah. Super Wing okay. Commander, we didn't cover yet. Uh, theme Park, we've covered. The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes, we've not covered, but that looks like it could be a good game. Escape from Monster Manor, which we will cover. Uh, Sesame Street Numbers, which I will make you cover. <laughs> uh, Twisted, we covered. Uh, the 3D Atlas. Um, I'm sure we'll cover it. Uh, well, good. let's cover it right now. 3D Atlas looks like a weird 90s interactive Atlas program that you would put on your PC back then. As a way to be like, oh, look how cool this is, but it's probably vastly outdated now because it was made in like 1995. If I find uh, a copy of it at some point, we'll cover it. But <laughs> that's like a big if. If, if you want my opinion, stay away. Uh, <laughs> Road Rash, we've covered. And then Shockwave, which we've covered. They're all EA kind of published games as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. EA was cooking on here. They were, so, they were, they were cooking. This game is very similar to uh, Twisted, where it is actually created by the 3DO company's uh, own internal studio, Studio 3DO. But 
I'm assuming because this this one came out in 93, so it was very early in the 3DO's life. Trip Hawkins was still associated with EA at the time. He probably was like, hey, can you do the publishing on a few games, please? Probably, yeah. Because um, I noticed that the cover art style is very similar to Twisted, only it's green instead of purple. I mean, if you looked through that, if you looked through that uh, 10 Great Reasons booklet, you notice they all have a similar like background style, mm. or, but they're just using colors that relate to the game. And then they just decide to use like whatever cover they have for the game. You know, I find it funny in the manual. This is, this is their design of a 3DO controller. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, they, were, they were a little off. I, I'm assuming yeah. it's because it's an early game. They didn't know yet. Maybe it looks like for the audio listeners, it looks like a NES dog bone controller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even has the same where the, the, the buttons are going up, but like away from your thumb. But you're, like, why did they think that was a good idea? Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Or anybody for that matter. Uh, it was still the early days where they were just trying shit. Yeah. Controllers weren't standardized yet. It's also one of the high quality 3DO cases with like the, the old school DVD like flip latch thing. Yeah. I mean, this this seems to be like an EA thing. EA, all the EA, um, all the EA, EA games. I think we have this kind of guy uh, in there. The early ones, anyways. I I think the later ones, yeah, because uh, PGA had that weird like box that just opened. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a bit later. I think Wing Commander Three had the same, like the yes. like the like the flap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are nice. These these surprisingly mm. hold up a lot better than the other long boxes. There was a couple non 3 video games that used those, because um, then Universal used that weird like, s- like slide open pop up case that's the like clamshell. Really- yeah, and then most of them use those really cheap cardboard. But yeah, when it's when really they all all of them should just use the fucking jewel case. Yeah, I, I know, but uh, 3DO had to be different. I, I've 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 heard the long box was to prevent theft. I've heard that too. I think it's also like that there was that mentality of like Americans just like big things for whatever reason. True. The thing about the nineties was the era of big baggy pants. So you could easily sneak one of these guys in those. Yeah. And, and with all those, the, the 93 zippers and all that, you could, you could easily fit this guy in there. If, oh, the if you were, if you were trying that hard enough to steal a video game in 1995, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody <laughs> has. Stealing a 3DO game, you know, you've really sunk at that point. Well, they just spent like $700 on the console, man. They can't afford anything else. Yeah, I know. I know right. Poor bastards. Yeah, just I'm just glad they didn't get in the Neo Geo. Yeah, yeah, I know. You weren't smuggling those cartridges out. Like two of, <laughs> two of them and your pants are falling down. Jesus Christ. It's just arcade boards with plastic shells on them. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Still a great system, but holy fuck. Oh, yeah. Don't look at the prices of it now. Yeah. And then the alternative was the CD model with the disk drive that had one speed. Slow. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. So were they really? I mean, Neo Geo games are great. <laughs> true. True. I mean, I love Neo Turf Masters as much as anybody else. but So Escape from Monster Manor is... So it's another first-person shooter on the console. And dare I say it is the best one we've played so far? I would I would say it's probably the best original FPS on the console. Yeah. I The whole time I was playing it, I was comparing it to BioFury a lot. Um, just because BioFury, I think, is like the pinnacle of uh, making a solid concept, even if it wasn't fully realized. Yeah. Um, this game, on the other hand, is older than, say, um, a po or, like, Killing Time, which we haven't covered yet, or, um, the, the Doom port, <laughs> enough, enough said. Yeah. Um, but... It, right, uh, Wolfenstein 3D, I think. Wolfenstein 3D was later. Uh, that one's an exception, because that's a really good port. Yeah, that's, um, that's why I was thinking of that, because I'm like, eh, you got Wolfenstein 3D on here, so it... Like, this doesn't clear that. True. Um, I will say the first thing with this, though, was the fact that it played very well and, like, didn't... 
Hi, Mr. Motorcycle. Um, <laughs> that, that was me. Sorry. They tend to hover around here quite a bit. It's all right. On Geek Addicts, it's like a recurring joke. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So the first thing I noticed when playing this one is that it controls very well for a Doom style FPS. What I like about this game is how simple it is. Mm. It's it, it's so basic. Like there, I guess there's a plot, but like who the fuck cares, right? I love the guy like, doing the voiceover the whole time. Oh, he's oh he's having a great time with it, and I'm having a great time listening to him. And it, it basically it's like the whole thing, the whole setup of it feels like it feels like a haunted house. Like mm. when I was playing the game, I'm like, this is this is like like an interactive like haunted house ride you know because it has all the stereotypes of like ooh, you're in this spooky house you have to recover these pieces to escape and there's terrifying things around every corner and it's alive ooh, you know like it's very generic kind of horror it, it's the kind of horror that like it was probably scary at a long time ago but now we find it kind of charming you know it's kind it, of it's cute. it's it's a very like it this would have been a perfect game for Halloween. I'm not going to lie. I oh, really yeah. Saved it. When but, I was um, playing it, I was thinking that. I'm like, this would have worked really I might have. Uh, I might actually stream that this for Halloween this year just, just for fun. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. But um, I did notice, like, right away, like, the sprites, they're, they're kind of creepy, but at the same time, like, in, in that charming, like, cheesy kind of way, like, like the first enemy oh, yeah, you see like in the, the game. The, the ghost, which is just, like, a dude with a blanket over him. Oh, and the, he's the, holding like a fake scythe. Yeah, there's that guy. There's also the trollish ghosts that like don't actually do anything, but they just pop up in your face every now and then. You're like, oh yeah, hey. and every time they 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 fucked me. They fucked me up. Every well, time. you like instinctively want to shoot them, but they don't actually do anything. They're just there to troll you. Basically. Yeah, yeah, they don't hurt. Yeah, they don't hurt you at all. It's just every time that happens, I'm like, god damn it. There was a lot of cases in this game where, like, you'd get, like, spooked by something and, like, shoot it, think he was an enemy, and it wasn't. Like, occasionally you'll open, like, a door and there'll be a hanging man, and you'll think it's an enemy, but no, it's just a guy hanging himself. And you're yeah, like, yeah, the, oh. the game the game has all of that, um, all of that, like, yeah, like, spooky Halloween, uh, like, charm. Like, if you ever have gone through, say, like, a haunted house around Halloween, or, like, like, there's a guy a couple doors down from me that, like, he'll, like outfit his garage to be like kind of like a spooky little maze thing and i've gone through it and it's it's fun you know and, and this game feels like that as well because you don't have a gun or gun you get a ray, you get a ray you, you you literally get like a ray gun that just shoots out like it's almost like a taser and you just like shoot electrical like bolts out of it and that's it there's no other guns it's just that and then you fill up the ammo for it and yeah it's like it's incredibly simple and yeah, graphically, it, it it is like silly with like the ghosts and then like the weird heads that shape shift and then the spiders and all that. But I was amazed at how clean everything was. Oh yeah, the sprites Espe are great. Yeah, especially your character's like hand and gun. Like it is smooth. Like those pixels are smooth. That's like, actually they're not, and they're pretty detailed as well. <laughs> speaking of the um, speaking of the hand and gun though, this is actually one of my favorite aspects of this game. The HUD is very simple. It's and dead I, space. It's dead space levels of HUD. And I appreciate it because they have everything you need, but it's so subtle how they do it. Your ammo, there's a meter on the gun, and like you just have to pay attention to that. And your health, just ha just watch the hand. The more damage the hand is, the more damage your health is. Yeah, and it's, it's brilliant. It, it's very easy level design because then they can like just focus on uh, the game world as well. And and I was surprised at how like detailed the maps were as well. I mean, I think mm. the levels can be a bit mazy and kind of like, it's... yeah, kind of roam around to kind of figure it out. But that seemed to be an issue with say Wolfenstein and Doom yeah. at the same this time. This game is very Wolfenstein. Like it's just, it's, oh, yeah. it's very flat. There's no, like, it's not Doom level where there's multiple or, or even PO'd where you have like multiple layers. It's um one flat level but that's perfectly fine for what this game's trying to do yeah yeah it's very mazy and all really you have to do is find a piece of the talisman and then leave and that's basically it my uh, uh my, one of my favorite moments in the first level was so it took me a little bit to realize how you were supposed to get more ammo because i didn't realize those little electric ball things were the uh the ammo pickups um so i ended up blowing all my ammo because i kept shooting the ghosts and everything and i was like fuck where do i get more ammo so i'm like looking through rooms 
and I opened the door that had like a thousand of the scythe guys just coming at me. And I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I was like running. <laughs> um, and they're all chasing you throughout the thing. I eventually found some more electric late, like the ammo stuff. And I just fucking annihilated all of them. But yeah. Was like, it was very tense for a few minutes there. I was like, oh shit. What do it I it do? occasionally gets tense. Yeah. There was a moment, I think it was in the third level where it's the, um, or it's like the fourth level or the first red level where you find where the talisman is. And then there's a bunch of those like weird transforming heads that burp like death gas at you or something mm -hmm. and and i and i was like trying to keep back and take them out and then i try to go up and more would just appear around the corner because they'll get stuck on the walls as well or like behind corners so when you go around they'll they'll kind of sneak attack you not necessarily i think trying to they just kind of got stuck um mm. but but yeah the the game just it, it's full of charm you know though it, it is annoying when you get to that second era area and you're constantly hearing tread carefully now like you're constantly <laughs> yeah. hearing that i feel like that's the statues talking to you because like the also, statues they open their mouth if you look at them long enough uh one of my the the, the background like atmosphere because there isn't really music per se it's mostly uh, uh there's some music it's a little bit but it's very subtle um yeah it's mostly um like atmosphere and like background noise. Like when you start the second level, if you listen carefully, you just hear like women a woman screaming in the background. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like, all, what the all, fuck? all like that stock Halloween stuff, you know, the or you know, all that stuff. Like the the best way to describe this game nowadays is it's very cute. Like oh it is, yeah, it was it was even cute back then. Oh yeah, you know, and, but it, but and. On top of all the charm, as we said, it's also a really good game. Like it controls mm. surprisingly well. Um, the the gameplay is very simple and straightforward, but not too repetitive. Um, it has a, a pretty decent map system. In fact, if you push C, you see everything. Like you see your health, your ammo, how much lives you have, all your keys, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the maps do a good job of painting everything for you. So you know like where you've been and where you haven't. So you can always mm. look at the map if you need to. Um, and yeah, there's not like too many secrets or like, there's no crazy difficulty spikes. I mean, some enemies can be harder than others, especially the spiders. I don't know mm. if you ever got to the spiders. Yeah, they, I did. Can, they <laughs> tend to like, like, cause you can't hit them when they're on the ground. You have to wait for them to jump. So trying to time your shot to when their jump can be a pain in the ass, but you know, but it, it and then certain levels they'll end with like a character, that's like a palette swap version of another character. And he's like super hard. So you just essentially wail all your ammo on him till he dies. And usually it takes a good chunk of your ammo to take him out. Hmm. Um, but yeah, but it, it's super simple and it's super enjoyable. And yeah, like it's difficulty, I think is just right. And very and, forgiving save system too. Like it lets you save after each level. So yes. just save and you'll be fine. Um, which and the, and the levels aren't crazy long either. No, they're not. And there's only like 10 of them. I think I think it's 12, 12. It's yeah. not it, it, for a nineties FPS. It's very forgiving. Yeah. I made I made it to the fourth level. So I, I made it a good way. I got like level five. I want to say I, I got around there and I was like, this is a game I'd like to play more of. I just don't have time. Um, yeah. Right now. Yeah. I don't have time to beat the whole thing. I probably will. Because with that generous save system, I could say pop it back in, play a level or two, and oh yeah, no, like because its learning curve is is practically nothing. No, it, it's it's very pick up and play, which is great for an FPS. Because some of these FPSs try way too hard to be like unique. And I mean, I this one is unique, but it, it's unique in a very simple way. It's unique in the sense that like the concept is like a, is really uh, fun. But like the actual gameplay itself is like about as simple as you can get, which I think is actually to its uh, um, like a pot to the positive on, on it rather than a detriment. Yeah, exactly. It, it 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 knows exactly what it's trying to be, and it just kind of succeeds at being that. You know, it doesn't go too far. It doesn't go too little either. You know what I mean? Like, there's no. Though, if this had some like silly FMV sequences, I think that would kind of be the icing on the cake. Yeah, because I, I feel like it. Like, could you imagine, like, in between the levels, you have like little FMV sequences of, like, mm. say, like the villain, like waiting for you or something, you know, and all that, like that cheesy stuff. That would have been, ooh, that would have been perfect. I can't believe I'm recommending FMV for a game, but I think it would have given it that little extra, like, zest to it, you know. 
because at the for, for the most part, all you really get is there's like a cutscene at the start when you first boot the game up that has like this really hilarious CGI like mansion that's like right up there with Castle the Castlevania from uh, Symphony of the Night. Yeah, um, yeah. Where it just doesn't look good, but it's charming at the same time. Yeah. Um. Other than that, the one thing I found that I I think is like the best way to describe this game is it is a perfect example of they understood the limits of the 3DO and they didn't go above them. They knew the which, assignment. Yeah. Like it is, I think like the best, the best way to describe it is they knew their limits and they made a great game because of that, which to me, which is hilarious because they, they, they didn't follow this later on with their other big FPS for the system, which, I have very split opinions on which we'll be getting, especially after playing this game. And I've seen, I've realized, holy fuck, this, this is actually good. Um, we'll, we'll get to it with killing time later, but killing time is a very divisive game. I'd say for the system, killing time is a different beast entirely. Yeah. So I think when that remaster comes out, that's probably when I'll play it. Yeah. And for that one, we're definitely going to have Casey on because Casey's a big fan of that game. So I'd really, I want to, get his yeah. full uh, opinion as well for sure for sure but yeah but this one i mean i knew i liked this one because when i got it i think i got it before you and messed around with it i was like genuinely surprised at how like simple it was and that's this is kind of what like the best 3do games tend to be games that are simple and unique mm. that 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 seems to be the running theme like if you say like incredible machine icebreaker um you know, say even like a return fire or a Gex, you know, something that's, it's simple, you know, you kind of know what it is going into it and it's unique. And be, and be, and because those two blend together, you're sort of able to go in and kind of figure it out, you know, mm. like this, it takes like a very simple kind of doom clone formula that was very popular at the time and just gives it a little bit of a spin, you know, mm. it doesn't overdo it because we're not in like that weird, like Doom 2 Quake era where the, where FPSs were really trying to branch out and do a lot of different stuff and some worked better than others, you know? Like we're still very deep in the 2D era. And mm. this and as you said, this one knew exactly what it was trying to do and it pulled it off. It's not PO'd, or I think PO'd is just a little too much. So much so, so much so that the system it was on couldn't really handle it. And my guess is when we play the the remaster of it, we'll probably be like, oh, this is much better on here. But, you know, that doesn't really benefit the 3DO version. PO was also trying to be just weird, like, for the sake of being weird at times. It was overdoing it. Yeah. Whereas Monster Manor, I wouldn't even say it's weird. It's just like, they're just like, oh, we like this sort of, you know, like when you go into a Halloween store and you see this kind of stuff around, you know, and you get a kick yeah. out of it. You know, you're like, oh, it's cool. I like that. You know, this is kind of what this is. You know, it, this game is sort of the spirit of Halloween. You know, yeah. that it's it's not really a scary holiday, you know, dare I, no. dare I, dare I say it's not scary, but it's fun. You know, we, we like to indulge in like that kind of stuff. You know, there, there, there's something fun about it. You know, some people get really into it, arguably a little bit too much into it, but, but it's still fun, you know, like around that time, like going into the, say like the costume shops or the spirit Halloweens when they pop up, you know, like like wasp nests or whatever yeah. and then you go in and you kind of look around and, and you kind of get into the spirit you know what i mean and, you, and, and this game this game is this is the spirit halloween of video games all right mm. like it, it's sort of that thing like it just pops up and then you kind of go in and you have your good and you have a good time with it and then and then that's it it doesn't take itself too serious and i think that is the best part about it that's the best Halloween stuff. It doesn't take itself that seriously. Like the stuff that I think is genuinely scary isn't scary for the sake of being it or say for like a Halloween sense, you know, mm. like there's a reason for it, you know, like this, this isn't trying to be that, you know, like alone in the dark was trying to be legitimately scary. And I think it's aged poorly because of that. Yes. This game is just trying to be funny and like, well, it's trying to be fun. Yeah. Like the fun scary. And I think because of that, it's aged incredibly well. Exactly. It, it's it's cheesy horror. I also love the fact that this game in Japan is known as virtual horror. <laughs> uh, Noruwata Yakata. I probably butchered that. I apologize. But I, I, I'm sure there's somebody out there who may actually find this game legitimately scary. 
Possibly. Yeah, I feel bad for them. But I mean, you know. my response when I first saw the scythe guy was that I opened the door and went, "Oh, hey, buddy, want to <laughs> hang out?" There, there was one time something got me. I forget what it was, but it was like a jump scare because it was like an enemy was just like I turned around, he was right fucking there. Ironically, the hanging guy gave me a spook just because I opened the door and I was like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "Oh, he's dead." Well, the first time I saw him too, and and occasionally the goat. Oh, there was one time it was in like the first or second level. I was walking and a ghost appeared like right here. And that freaked yeah. me the fuck. I was like, Jesus Christ. You know, I, they get, they piss me off. Cause they just troll you. They don't even get do it. Oh yeah. They're, they're just there. dicks. Yeah. They're just there to fuck with you. And you're like, great. Which is if I became a ghost, that's what I would do. I would just fuck with people. Oh yeah. I wouldn't. It sounds like it'd be a blast. I wouldn't be a dick. I'd just be that. Well, I'd be a dick, but I wouldn't be like an asshole. Yeah. Just, like, yeah. Just Cause, cause if ghosts people. are real and they're just like fucking with people, like all these people who believe, they're probably just having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, all these people lose their shit. Let's just keep going. Which is, to be fair, I'd do the same thing. Yeah. Um. So going into a reception, this game was weirdly kind of all over the place. Um, It's an early game, too, so it got a lot of reviews. But uh, all game only gave it two and a half stars. Dragon <laughs> gave it two stars. Fuck Dragon. Uh, Edge gave it a five out of ten. EGM a 6.7 it was very middling apparently uh, this dragon magazine is one of two official magazines for source material for the D role-playing game so why the fuck were they reviewing 3do games god who knows could you imagine a 90s D mag like reviewing this game that's probably why they didn't like it they were probably being pretentious little shits about it even 3do magazine only gave it a three out of five yeah. stars oh um, oh so somebody has scanned the copy of dragon that has the review in it. At least <laughs> scanned it. Um, so you keep I, talking, I'll, I'll find it. So one of the reviews, uh, the, the edge review kind of like th they unfavorably compared the game to doom, which I think is stupid. Cause it, it's, that's not, very, yeah, it's not the same. Doom is on a different level. Doom was like the next logical step after this style of FPS. Like this is much more comparable to Wolfenstein. Yeah, yeah. Doom is a time-tested masterpiece, whereas Escape from Monster Manor is a uh, hidden gem. Hmm. Um, the nicest reviews came from like GamePro, who gave it a eighteen point five out of twenty. Uh, Game Fan gave it a three hundred and forty-three out of four hundred. God, cool. fucking, I hate, I hate all these shit-ass rating systems. I know <laughs> they're so stupid. Uh, Joystick gave it a 73. Maniac uh, gave Maniac. it a 73. Uh, video Games with a Space gave it 67. And then Video Games Without a Space gave it 8 out of 10. Some of these magazines are funny. I don't think... I think the only ones here that actually still exist are like EGM, Game Pro, and Famatsu. And I'm not yeah. even 100% sure on those. I'm pretty sure they're all still around. Um... Is all game still around? What the hell even is all game? Is it like all music? Yeah. It's like that. It, oh, it's the branch of all music that's for video gaming. Oh, no, they've been gone since 2014. Oh, man. I wonder what glitch wave gave this game. Oh, Edge is still around, I think. Yeah, it, yeah, Edge is. Yeah, Edge is still in fact, you know what? Let me, let me check. Let me check glitch wave real quick. Like, do you know what rate your music is? Oh yeah, they have a video game version called Glitch Wave. Oh, okay, well, let's see. Uh, there's only six ratings for the game, and it averages at a two point six one. Hmm. These people are fucking dumb. But but to be fair, I think the highest rated game on here is uh, Disco Elysium hmm. of all time. So yeah. <laughs> Do, here, the top five. It's Disco Elysium, Bloodborne, Silent Hill 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and Mother 3. I mean... I, I think that describes their taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All great games, but, you know. They are. It's a very interesting selection there, though. That's what I'll yeah. say. Yeah, very interesting selection. But, you know, what, what do you expect from these weirdos? You know, they're all, like, Radiohead people. Yeah. Um, that being said, though... Going into okay, must play, stay away. Oh, must play. Must are play. You, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this Come on. Might, 
this might be like one of the best games we played for the system. I, I think this game, when we do this tier list again, I think we're both gonna throw this fucker in the S tier. Like this was this was a great game. Oh yeah, like I mean, we've started off the second half of um our uh, rundown pretty badly. Like we've had three flops, and then it's like we immediately go into like arguably one of the best games we've played. Like this is up there with yeah. Like, and Either this game, speed, icebreaker, um, John Madden. And like, you know, it's, and, and you know, the thing is, this game is a 3DO exclusive. It has it never is. been ported. Doesn't even have a PC port, which, which is, is crazy. Wild, man. yeah. Because so many 3DO games, at the very least, got ported to PC. And this, this is nope. This is up there with like Icebreaker as like one of those reasons to buy a 3DO. Genuinely, like if it, like listeners, if you end up getting a 3DO or want to play 3DO games, like this is on this, put this on your short list. Mm. Absolutely. And I think, do you remember what you paid for this guy? The physical of it? Uh, the complete boxed version. I think I paid like 30 bucks. Uh, let me, let me find. I think I'm pretty sure I bought this one off eBay. I got to scroll through. I buy too much shit on eBay. Uh, I gotta keep going. You you talk. I'll keep going. Um. Yeah, I think the so I it, it, if you're going for either the loose disc, it's probably cheaper. The the long box, which is what most people would want, I paid around like the thirty to thirty five ish range. Yeah, I mean for for these guys, I think we'd recommend the long boxes because these guys have aged fairly well and they're really unique designs that surprisingly have withstood the test of time. Also, with with a with one of these like the clamshell boxes, unfortunately, just by the how they were made, they don't have jewel cases. So, if you don't get true. the box, you're just going to get a loose disc, which kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, I cannot find this in my eBay. Maybe I didn't buy it on eBay. Maybe I bought it in person somewhere. But yeah, I I can't remember what I paid for it. I don't think it was that bad. It's not um, one of the worst, but it's also not super cheap for well, most, 3DO standards. Well, most 3DO games aren't super cheap. Let me let me check Game Eye to see Let's what see. it's going ah. for right now. All right, for for price charting, uh, loose it's at twenty eight eighteen. Complete is sixty one fifty nine. Yeah, so that's that's a little pricey, but that's not the worst. Yeah, yeah, it could be worse. Um, in fact, if I check the eBay listings at this current time, let's see what's going for from what I see. I'm seeing it in like mid 60s to like mid 70s is what I'm seeing it for now. There are some jewel case versions that are a little bit cheaper, but yeah, this one is starting to climb. Like I'm seeing it go for like 100 now. Yeah. It's so, um so this one might be like if you can get this for a good price, go for it. Otherwise, I would stick to, to emulation just because of how expensive it is. But yeah. regardless, you will have a, a very good time with it. it. It is a super fun game. Hmm. Now the question really is what do we play next? I mean, I know what I want to play next, but uh, what were you thinking? I want to do demolition, man. Right. But I don't think um, you don't have Demolition Man, do you? I don't own it. I might be able. Well, let me let me do an eBay check right now. That one's I think getting pricey too. Um, Demolition Man, 3DO. Yeah, I'm seeing it for. I mean, you can get a jewel case version of it for like forty bucks. Yeah, but the uh, long box is like probably twice that. <laughs> So there's one with no manual for forty bucks. That's not a. That's actually not terrible. Yeah, though there though there's a great typo in the manual. Is there? Well, if if you don't get the manual, I'll show it to you. So how about we? I'll try to get Demolition Man. How about we settle on that be the next game? But maybe next week we'll do. Maybe we'll do another uh, developer showcase. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, uh, we'll leave it ambiguous for now because we probably gonna think about it. <laughs> But um, yeah, ne next week we'll be talking about uh, Echo the Dolphin for the Dreamcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll be playing Test Drive Le Mans. Le Mans. Le Mans, whatever the oh, fuck, whatever. Le Mans. I'm not European, all right? <laughs> I went to the bathroom earlier. 
Yes. <laughs> but uh, on that note, once again, <laughs> once again, guys, thank you for joining us on the 3DO experience. The 3DO experience can be found on all the major podcasting platforms, particularly Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to check us out over on the Superpod Network, uh, superpodnetwork.com. You can find a bunch of um, podcasts, blogs, videos. Uh, who knows the, what the website will look like? Aaron likes to change it every day. <laughs> um, I've noticed lately. There will always be content. Yes, there will. But um, you can also find a ton of great shows like Super Pod Saga, Super Ghost Radio, Retro Rehab, um, A Novel Console, uh, Bar Silence, um, Remember 64, Gaming Together, uh, Tommy's Video Game Ride Along, Friday Night Gamecast, The Elder Trolls, Fine Time, uh, GNC Shows. I think that's everybody. I'm just going to assume yes. Okay. If I forgot you, I'm sorry. Um, Send your hate mail. But with that, everybody, we will see you all later. Well, don't don't forget, I am streaming. Oh, that is true. The streams are um, back. Yeah, the streams are back. We did it last week. Seemed to. I'm a little rusty, but I'll get back into it. I won't be doing it this Thursday because I am recording um, a guest spot on a podcast this Thursday. So stay uh, stay tuned for that. So I will be streaming this weekend, probably like a Sunday afternoon type deal is what I'm thinking. So, so yeah, I'll be playing some Genesis games. I still haven't picked the ones I'm going to play. I think I had one that somebody asked me to do, but I have a list. So I'll just go through the list. Nice. Um, and the link for that is down in the description of the podcast, and you can find it in the video version down there. Yes. And, I, and I'm also uploading the, the, the VODs to YouTube slightly edited so go there uh subscribe to the youtube follow the twitch i need i think 50 followers to be an affiliate and i'm at like 31 nice so just do that and then you know maybe i can get like a dollar from the streams jay i'll take it nice and with that everybody we will see you all later Bye bye